What's up guys, it's your boy Tremel. I just wanted to say that I have a new project that's out. It's called Mixed Feelings. It's on all streaming platforms. I would hope that you would go and check it out. It's a really good feel of an album. It's got everything you need and more. It's got R&B, it's got a little bit of pop, it's got a little bit of hip hop. It's everything that you need and more. It's out, all streaming platforms, like I said. Please check me out and you can also follow me at I am underscore Tramel. That's I am underscore T-R-A-M-E-L. Check me out, I hope to hear from you. What's going on, y'all? This will be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new episode of Yes for the Mess, you guys. We're here to talk about a couple of things, a couple of things, a couple of things, but before we get into them couple of things, let's get into what we got coming up today, okay? Now, today is Friday, and that means Boys Night Out will be returning for our fourth episode, so be on the lookout for it. Um, make sure y'all tune in for your favorite quintet. We'll be in the building to talk about a couple of things, some hot topics. We got a little bit of fun shade, a little bit of games. A little bit of everything and more that makes a fun show. So be on the lookout for Boys Night Out. Be sure to tune in um, tonight at 9, 8 central. That is 9, 8 central tonight. Okay, so be on the lookout for it. If times change, you will absolutely be notified of a time change. And if they do change, it'll probably be pushed back either 15 to 30 minutes. But as of right now, the time is 9, 8 central. Okay, so be on the lookout for it. Okay, now that's pretty much all we have have for what we got coming up so be on the lookout for all of that so let's get into today's mess okay let's get into it now we're gonna start this thing off with talking about um nia long's husband not nia long's husband oh my god why am i doing it we're not starting off with nia long's husband we're starting off with kenya barris barris i think that's how you pronounce his name kenya barris okay so um he's doing um a remake of The Wizard of Oz. That's what he's doing. And he revealed that there will be some LGBT representation in The Wizard of Oz remake. And of course, a lot of people have a lot to say about the situation. So I got an article here from TheRoot.com. And um, I'm going to tell you guys what it says. And after I tell y'all what it said, we're going to move on. We're going to dissect it and move on to the very next topic. But um, let's get into it, y'all. So... It says that um, Kenya Barris is set to write, direct, and produce um, the forthcoming film under his, um, I cannot pronounce the K word, but I know it's Ink Society, Banner for Warner Brothers. And although specific plots, um, plot details are being kept to a minimum, on Wednesday, the Grownish creator gave a, us a little insight as to what we can expect to see once it's released and specifically teased that, yes, there will be LGBT representation in the film. The original was um, allegory and a reflection of the way the world was at the time with the way things with things like the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. Now we're going to turn a mirror on what on where we're at right now and take the characters from the LGBT community from different cultural communities and social economic communities and tell a story that reflects the world. I think this is the best time to do that. He added, I'm nervous. Hopefully my movie can last as long as the original does and hopefully my movie comes out. In addition to this film, Barry's slate of projects continue to build. He and Snoop Dogg will be teaming up for an up-and-coming football-centric feature, The Underdogs, which will be centered around Jason Jennings, two J's, a former NBA, a former NFL superstar who, after a run-in with the law, agrees to coach a youth football team in lieu of prison in the hopes of relaunching his fledgling career. As previously reported by the Root, Barris, is, Barris also has an up-and-coming Netflix film, You People, that he co-wrote with Jonah Hill that stars Eddie Murphy, Neil Long, Lauren London, and Hill. That's slated to drop sometime next year. 
Now, that's pretty much it on this story. Now, my brother is the reason why I'm talking about this. My brother sent me um, the link to this particular story um, yesterday while I was at work. And I was um, actually slated to discuss it um, on another video that I did, but I did not because it was way too late for me to talk about it because it was late at night like it is right now. So I decided I'd talk about it on this particular video. My thing is, I don't see nothing wrong with Kenya Barris um, trying to include different aspects of the world. It's kind of like how everybody was mad that um, there was a Black Little Mermaid. Why is it that everybody is mad? Because there would be some LGBT representation. It's all about representation. It's not about trying to turn your kids into anything. It's not about forcing your kids into anything. At the end of the day, I feel like um, whenever it comes down to gay representation, I think people would be just fine if people that are gay would just shut the fuck up and just be seen and not the fuck heard. That's how it comes across to me. It's all about representation. Everybody gets to have representation. You have the blacks, you have the whites, you have the Latinas, you have different people with different representation. So what is the big deal when the LGBT crowd gets a little bit of representation? They are We are prominent in the entertainment industry at this point. We run a lot of things that's going on and not to mention... We are here. We are in pop culture. So why not include that? We always want to talk about we're forcing this on the kids, but yet there's violence in children's movies. There's violence in um on cartoons. There's there's um you know displays of affection between a man and a woman on TV. Um there they, I mean Let's let's be honest. Like they didn't. He didn't say that he was gonna have LGBT characters slobbing down on he uh, on each other. He just said that there would be some representation for the LGBTQ community because there are people out there that is a part of the LGBTQ community. I don't see what the big deal is. I don't see what the problem is. I don't see why it would be wrong for them to be included, for us to be included. I don't understand why we would not be. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see what the big deal is. I don't. And people be so bothered anytime there's, especially in the shade room and the neighborhood talk, it's just like anytime stuff like this comes about, it's always a problem. It's always an issue. It's always um, people getting upset. It's always, y'all always worrying about the children. And you're never worried about the children when it comes down to other stuff. Y'all sit up and y'all listen to people like Lil Boosie and hear him spill all this ignorance about LGBT and how we're trying to ruin the kids and there's an agenda. If we're really being honest, and I don't mean this in a, in a negative way, I really could give a damn about y'all kids. I'm living my damn life. I'm not trying to make y'all kids gay. What the fuck would I have to gain by making your fucking crumb snatch a gay? What do I have to gain by that? I don't. I never understand people who really feel like there's an agenda out here to make people gay. And let's just be honest. If I had it my way, I would not be gay. If I had it my way, being gay is probably one of the hard, one of the hardest things to be. That's my thing. It's one of the hardest things. We, we're judged quite a bit. Um, you can't even make a post about us on the shade room without somebody being negative and making it into a bad situation. Like people be looking at us like we're like like we're the like we're the scum of the earth. So I would never talk about an agenda. Be glad. I'd be saying, be glad you ain't nothing like me. Be glad you not. Because I'd be like, girl, like, because these people really be upset and be bothered and all types of stuff. So I don't, I, I don't get it. But that's just that on that. So I don't see nothing wrong with him, including um, LGBT representation in The Wizard of Oz. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I'm all the way here from it, for it. I'm glad that he's involving all different kinds of representation to be a part of the movie. I'm just saying, I'm glad that he is. I don't see it. Not a, I don't have any issue with it. I have no problem with it. And that's just what it is, okay? So um, I just really want to know what you guys think. Do y'all think it's a little bit too much? Um, do you guys think that um, him having an LGBT character in the movie is too much? Do y'all think that um, 
is it's causing a problem do y'all agree with the people that's in the shade room saying that it's being forced down a kid's throat let's really have a conversation let's talk about it i'm open to everybody's opinions my opinion may be strong about the situation but i'm very open to you guys giving y'all thoughts so we're gonna move on to the next story and we're gonna move on to um ray j in Trey songs now before i started this video i was looking at armand um wiggins video and um i saw that people were talking about this particular story and there was a trans woman who spilled some tea on um ray j in Trey songs now ray j has been in the blogs a whole lot for the past couple of weeks about his situations with chris jenner kim kardashian just he's been in the blog spill, spilling all the tea and we already know that Trey songs has been in the blogs for a whole lot of scandalous ass shit lately so I don't know where this come from. This obviously on Bigo. Y'all know I don't do ghetto ass Bigo. Bigo is ghetto to me. It is very ghetto. I don't want no parts of it. Trust and believe me, I really don't. But child, we're about to get on into it now. Uh, this comes from the neighborhood talk, of course. Definitely comes from the neighborhood talk. And um, we're going to get into it. So let's get into, let me get my screen sharing ready, child. We're about to go ahead and get into it because there's audio. I'm glad I know how to share the screens now, child. I ain't got to pull out my Bluetooth speaker all the goddamn time. So um, we're about to share this screen. Let's share it real fast, child. Let's share it. Or is this it? Okay, let's see. Let me take the um overlay off. Let me see if this will work. Okay, y'all. So here we go. Let's get into it. Let's play it, y'all. I don't know, friend, whoever. I just 
confirmed it. What's gonna happen to me? It was a fact. Nothing. And not to mention, hold on, wait, wait. Let me just say Why this last word. Why you A friend of mine from back in LA that, you know, see me on the app and boom, just woke it up. Yeah. I'm looking at you. Okay, you're out here sucking this. Okay. Do not have me pull up your ass. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. So we back. So that was a transgender woman basically speaking about her supposedly having sex with Trey Songs and uh, um, Ray J. First of all, first of all, because I know that some people that do watch me from the LGBTQ community, because it ain't that many that do. They're probably going to be mad at me when I say this, but y'all know I don't give a fuck. Y'all know this already. Y'all know that I don't give a damn about being in the LGBT community. It don't move me no motherfucking way. Y'all know this. Because a lot of the times I don't be down with the bullshit that be going on. I don't be down with it. I don't be down with it. I don't care. I don't be down with it. And motherfuckers can be mad with me all the fuck they want to because I'm going to say what it is. Okay? First of all, I want to make it clear that you getting on Bego with a bunch of people bragging about fucking Ray J in Trey songs, it's not a flex. If anything, you sound like a fucking clout chaser. That's what you sound like. Because what the fuck make you think that it's okay for you to sit up and put that shit out there? Now, what if they were? Because I don't know if they was fucking with you or not. I don't put nothing past anybody. But my thing is, what if they really were messing with you? You know what I mean? Like, what what are you talking about? My like, And then, you know, there will be LGBT people that will sit up and defend this kind of behavior. And I'm not defending this shit. I think that it's absolutely wrong for somebody to sit up and do that. I don't give a damn how nobody feel about it either. I think that it's absolutely wrong to do that. Like, why do you think that that shit is even okay to do? I'm not understanding of the situation. What the fuck make you think that that's okay? And what the fuck make you think that that's right to do? It's not. You know what I mean? And it ain't no flex. A lot of the times they get their ass online and then they talk shit. They get in these interviews, they get on lives and shit, and they sit up and they brag about, you know, who they done fucked and who they done slept with as if we ever asked for that, as if we ever cared about who the fuck they slept with. You know what I mean? And it's like a lot, just like with the whole Shauna Brooks and Benzino thing. You wanted a relationship with this man, but you already knew what it was when you got with him. And see, a lot of the times, When these folks sit up and lie, I ain't going to say lie, but when they sit up and say this shit, making it seem like they were sleeping with these men, and a lot of the times it turns out not to be true. We saw what happened with Sydney Starr and and Chingy. She sat up there and ruined that man's career and said that she was sleeping with this man, and it turned out not to be true. And by the time she admitted that the shit wasn't true, the damage was already fucking done. It was already done. The shit not cool. The shit ain't right. You just don't go out here lying on people like that. You just don't. It's never okay to do no bullshit like that. It's never okay to do no shit like that. Point blank in the period. It's never okay. Like, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? It's all a fact. Why do you? Why do y'all kiss and tell anyway? Why do y'all even do that? Why do y'all sit up and kiss and tell any fucking way? Like, I don't even understand it. Why do y'all sit up and kiss and tell anyway? I don't, I don't get it. Then y'all think it's cute. Y'all think that shit cute. And it's not. Y'all think it's cute, but it's not. And then y'all get mad when people call y'all out for the bullshit. It's never okay. 
for y'all to be going around doing the bullshit like that. Y'all be doing the fool and think everybody's supposed to be down with it. I'm not down with that bullshit. I'm just not down with the fucking bullshit. I am not down with that. I'm not. I never be down with it. Y'all could be mad all the fuck you want, but I'm not down with it. Like, I never be okay with anybody. I don't give a damn if it's a trans woman. I don't give a damn if it's a gay dude. I would never be down with nobody outing anybody for anything. Like, I don't think that it's I don't think it's right to out anybody's sexuality because we all was in a down low at one point in time. I don't think that it's right to out somebody um trans uh, transitioning if they're not ready to come out yet. I don't think that it's right to lie to people about you being being transgender. And I don't like it when you guys are transgendered and you put them and you expose the people that you're sleeping with. I don't like it when you gay and you ex- expose the people that you're sleeping with. Y'all make it hard for motherfuckers to come out in the first place. So I just, I'm not down with that. I think that this shit is absolutely tacky, thirsty, fucked up, clout chasing. I don't like it and I never stand for that bullshit. So if you LGBT and you listening to me and you got a problem with what the fuck I'm saying, I don't care. And I say I don't give a fuck with me grabbing my nuts all day. I don't give a fuck. If I can give it to everybody else, I can give it to my own kind. We're going to move on to the next story. And that is Miss Nia Long, okay? Now, Nia Long's husband, this story ain't really about Nia Long. It's mainly about a husband. But a husband, which I did not know that Nia Long was even married. But, um, oh, that's not her husband. It's a fiancé. Um, her fiance was suspended um, as the coach of the Boston Celtics due to violations of team policies. Okay. And the, it was according to a statement from the team. So basically, he's been suspended. So let's get into the story, y'all. So um, this story comes from E Online. Now it says that the professional basketball coach has been engaged to um, Nia Long since 2015, was suspended from his role as the head coach of the Boston Celtics. The team announced this on the 22nd of September. Now, first of all, y'all been engaged for the last seven years. What the fuck? What the, what the, what? Ch- okay. Anyway, he was suspended for the um, 2022-2023 season, effective immediately due to violation of, of team policies the celtic statement read it added a decision about his future with the celtics beyond this season would be made at a later date following the news he gave a statement to espn reporter malika andrews to address the situation and take accountability i want to apologize to our players fans the celtics organization and my family for letting them down he said i am sorry for putting the team in this difficult situation and I accept the team's decision. His message concluded, out of respect for everyone involved, I will have no further comment. Before joining the Celtics last year, he coached for the Brooklyn Nets, Philadelphia 76ers, and San Antonio Spurs. Him and Nia Long, who reportedly met in 2010 and share one son who is age 10. She's also a mom to um, adult son, uh, Masi Dorsey, from a previous relationship. Okay, the actress who appeared in Empire, the best man and dear white people hasn't publicly spoken on this about the suspension. Of course, she's not going to speak on it. I wouldn't speak on it either. But. Yeah, my thing is, girl, I don't understand y'all. Y'all really be out here doing this crazy shit. Y'all know that this shit ain't right. Y'all know y'all not supposed to be fraternizing with these folks. Now, there have been people on Twitter that um that have been talking about oh no nah, this is Brett Favre child this ain't got nothing to do I don't even know what the fuck going on Brett Favre but there have been a lot of people talking about you know uh how could he uh cheat on Nia Long and stuff like that now I see a couple of um tweets that I want to read to you guys that I saw now they said how to break up they said this is they said this is how the breakup going between Nia Long and the dude. So I said your name. I'm all right. Well, I'm Nia Long. Nia Long. Forget it. Nick. What? That's right, girl. Then they said, when your wife is Nia Long, yes, I recommend jail time. They said, he cheated on Nia Long. Ban him for life. 
Someone said, can't even care, bruh. Cheating on Nia Long is absolutely ludicrous. As a player, I wouldn't listen to nothing he say to me ever again. Someone said, he fumbled Nia Long and the NBA Finals. I never seen an L worse than this one. Then someone said, everybody consoling Nia Long after this news. Guys, when they find out Nia Long about to be single, <laughs> a mess, they said, I'm ready to step up Nia Long. Then Nina Parker said, cheating on Nia Long, end of days has to be upon us because ain't no way then michael sykes said i love black twitter so much because our collective reaction to this has been nah you ain't do that to me alone then someone um was like me along this up <laughs> everybody going in okay but yeah how the fuck do you cheat on me along of all fucking people how do you cheat on her like there listen there there are a couple of women that I would let take take advantage of me. Nia Long is definitely one. Regina King is another one. Um, who else? I know it's Nia, Regina King. Um, it was somebody else because I had like a top five list, but I know Nia Long and Regina King are the main ones. How do you cheat on Nia? Like, how do you cheat on Nia? Like, Nia been looking the same way she been looking ever since Friday. How do you cheat on Nia long? That's something I never understand. How the fuck you cheat on Nia of all people? You don't cheat on Nia long. The fuck? You need to be banned for life for cheating on Nia long, child. Like, that, that's, that's, that's a fumble if I've never seen it. Like, no. Come on now, bro. Like, but he got suspended and rightfully deserved. He got suspended because he was fucking around being inappropriate with somebody he had no business being inappropriate with and then on top of that he also is banned mainly because of the fact that he cheated on me alone you do the time you do the goddamn crime bitch i'm just saying like what the fuck you got to be kidding me you got to i i mean you got to be kidding me that's <laughs> that's all i can say like what the, what the fuck are you doing child oh girl it's a hot mess. It really is a hot mess. Like, how do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> but anyway, um, we're gonna move on to the next story. This this is the last story, and I had gr I have great pleasure at reporting this story. And this is LL Cool J versus DJ Academics. I cannot stand. DJ Academics, that's one motherfucker I want to fight. I cannot stand him. I, I just want one round, just one round. Now, apparently, he said some stupid shit, as he always do, which prompted LL Cool J to go the fuck in on him. So let's so let's look at what was said. Okay. Let's let's get into it. Now, what was said was this. This is this is what was said. Hold on, y'all. Let's 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 get into this this shit right here. Okay, let me take it off. Okay, so let's get into what was said. Now he said, "Did okay." So apparently he was on Twitch. Okay, he was on Twitch. Whatever the fuck that is, he was on Twitch. And according to Billboard, during a recent stream on Twitch, academics was heard saying this, which is his comments up here. He said, "Them old rappers, man. Have you seen any?" Of these old rappers who be like, yo, they're the foundation of hip hop really living good. Them niggas be looking dusty. I kid you not. And none of y'all try to come for me because I don't fuck with y'all niggas either. So I'm just telling y'all the truth. Every time, every time there be like an old, old niggas talking about hip hop, you be like, yo, bro, you sure you invented this? Everybody else is looking better than you. I'm going to save my comments until after. I play what LL Cool J got to say. Because first of all, I don't play about LL Cool J. Let's make that clear. I don't I don't play no games when it comes down to LL. That's one of my favorite rappers, as y'all know. Um, my style of dressing is, is straight from LL Cool J. Y'all know this already. However, we're about to get right on into this shit. We're about to get right on into it, y'all. Let me share this. Okay, so... Let me take this off. Hold on, you guys. I'm letting this shit. Okay, there we go. So let's do it. Hold 
Hold on, wait a minute. It's messing up. It's on mute. Let me take it off mute. There we go. So, you guys might want to record this. Um, make sure you're recording this or screen recording it or something so that you, you know, you guys get it. Um, you know, I don't go live a lot. I haven't really been going live since, you know, the pandemic, but this is something that came to my attention. It came to my attention that a DJ, and um, I'm not going to say any names because I don't think it's necessary. A DJ basically said that... Um, you know, a lot of the pioneers in hip hop are, you know, they're dusty or how can they be the pe person that, um, you know, invented hip hop if, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of money um, or if they don't look or represent like they have a lot of dope, right? Let me explain something to you um, and, and, and say this for you guys. Don't confuse someone's ability to develop a business model. Don't conflate. In other words, don't think just because somebody knows how to get money or fails to get money that they didn't make a contribution to the culture. No one discusses Miles Davis's bank account. We don't talk about John Coltrane's bank account. We don't talk about a lot of even rock musicians, a lot of them. We don't talk about their bank accounts. A lot of great country artists, we don't talk about their bank accounts. Um, this idea that you have to have money or else you don't have any value is a bad idea. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's kind of like, it's a misinformed way of looking at it the world and the culture there are artists out here first of all let me let me let me say this first of all you know like let's talk about like young artists right which who i love i love the young artists let's be clear i'm very much a guy who embraces the young artists i believe in every generation i believe in you i care about you let me say this to you though today you could come up with your five-year plan your 10-year plan your 20-year plan you can go find a manager. You can find an accountant. You can find somebody that means something to you, um, you know, to help you. You can find a team to help your career go to the next level. When hip hop first started, there were no managers. There were no accountants that believed in it. Record companies didn't even believe in it. Nobody believed in it. How can you make a five-year plan or a 10-year plan on something that doesn't even exist yet, that people have never even heard of. So just because a couple of these guys and girls and people out here made songs and made music and made contributions to this culture, or even dancers danced and 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 and, and put made these contributions to the culture, just because they didn't get rich, just because they weren't able to pile up millions or billions of dollars does not mean that they didn't make a contribution to this culture. That does not mean that they didn't do something. They created an industry that we all ate off of. They created an industry that you eat off of. When you go out there and you go monetize your brand, when you go monetize your brand, when you go get your, your whatever and do what you got to do to build your career, when you go out there and and negotiate your deals and negotiate your checks and talk tough. Guess what? That money, that bread, that food that you eaten was created by those same people that you disrespected. That industry was created by them same people you call in, you know, foul words, foul language. The thing, the people that you're referring to. So my thing is this: it's always good. It's always good to get money. It's all. It's important. It's important. It's important.
important to get money. I agree. I'm all about paper. I've been talking about it my whole career. But don't ever, ever, ever confuse being rich with making a contribution to our culture. Don't ever play yourself like that again. Because trust me, you're playing yourself. Because without these dudes and these girls who started this hip-hop culture, a lot of the guys that's out there talking tough, you wouldn't even have a career. You'd be, we'd be on the corner with a beer talking about what's the next move we're going to make. So I would say approach this game with humility and be glad and be thankful that these pioneers, you know, these exactly slave mentality, be glad that these pioneers help create this culture. And let's show them love. Let's elevate them. Let's celebrate them. That's why I started Rock the Bells. That's why I started this movement. So I wouldn't have to listen to, to foolish rhetoric about people that changed the world. These people changed the entire world. The whole planet runs on hip-hop culture right now. The whole planet, every commercial, every the, 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 you know, everything you can think of is all about hip-hop. And there are people out there that started this thing, and I think that they deserve to be honored and respected. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm not going to say no names. I'm not going to say nothing foul. I'm not going to go at nobody's character. I'm just going to say... Think before you speak. Peace. Well, that was a lot, I must say. That was a whole lot, first of all. That was a lot. So with that being said, all hail to LL Cool J. Like I said, y'all already know I'm here for LL. Y'all already know that's my favorite. One of my favorite rappers next to Tupac. Y'all know this. Everybody know this. Y'all know this. I'm going to say this. He had every right to go off on DJ Academics. Every right to go off on DJ Academics. Every right to go off on DJ Academics. Because this chipmunk looking ass bitch always gets on Twitch and spew all types of nonsense. Always being disrespectful. Always coming out of his mouth saying shit that don't make no fucking sense. Okay? That's number one. First of all, he want to talk about what these so-called old niggas who created the hip-hop movement and what they've done. What the fuck have you done, bitch? Let me know that. What the fuck have you done besides get your stupid, ugly ass on the radio and, and, and bully women and talk about shit that don't make no fucking sense? What have you done to move forward with the with the movement of hip hop? You a DJ. You should be a part of moving forward, the, the, you know, moving, moving the movement forward. But you don't do shit. You sit on your platform and you diss everybody. What the fuck have you done that's so fucking special? You want to sit your ass up and talk about what the fuck these so-called old niggas has done. But what the fuck have you done, though? What have you done that's so fucking special? Answer me that shit. I'm getting real tired. Of this chipmunk looking bitch running his mouth. If he ain't dick riding Tory or dick riding whatever male rapper that's out there, he or if he ain't disrespecting Megan the Stallion or Nicki Minaj, he out here saying some stupid shit. You talking about how niggas look in their clothes, but how the fuck do you look in yours? You don't come out snazzy. You don't come out looking like you worth a million dollars. What the fuck do you like, dude? Shut the fuck up. Y'all, when I tell y'all I do not like this man at all, like anytime y'all send me anything dealing with this stupid ass nigga, I'm going to go the fuck off on him because I'm sick of his ass. He always running his fucking mouth and always saying some ignorant ass fucking bullshit. And if y'all could see my face right now and the way my neck is rolling, you would see that I really mean business right now. I 
cannot stand DJ Academics. I detest him. Like, I really want to go and curse him out. Can we have? Can we be on a platform where I could just cuss his motherfucking ass out? Because he is so stupid. That's one stupid ass motherfucker. He's stupid as fuck, bruh. I do not like him. I don't like him. I don't like this nigga, period. Like, I just need for him to shut the fuck up. I'm going to need for him to move on with his life. I'm going to need for him to stop speaking on shit and he ain't got... How you going to speak on something but ain't got no substance? You can't tell us shit. You really cannot. You can't tell us a damn thing. So how the fuck you going to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's just stupid to me. Like, how the fuck you going to get your ass up here and say anything about anybody and what the fuck they doing for the culture? What the fuck are you doing? That's what I'm trying to figure out. What the fuck are you doing for the culture? You're not doing nothing but spout negativity. That's how the fuck you do. I don't know if y'all sick of me dragging DJ Academics, but I'm never tired of dragging that bitch. Like, he needs it because I can't stand him. Like, I cannot stand DJ Academics, and I'm so glad that LL went the fuck off on him. And I would love to know what the hell DJ Academics has to say in response to what the fuck LL had to say. Because everything that LL said was all facts. It was all truth. It was everything that needed to be said. Because I can't stand that bitch-ass nigga. That is one bitch-ass nigga. I don't like that man, okay? Listen, I... mm -mm. I'm going to have to get the fuck off of him because I can't stand him. Do you hear me? I don't like that man worth a damn. I swear I don't. I swear I don't. But, y'all, that's pretty much it. That's really all I got to say. I sat up here for 41 minutes with y'all. That's pretty much it. That's all I really got to say. I should be doing a live um a little bit later on today about the Tasha K. Bishop and Larry Reed situation. Hopefully you guys tune in and all that other good stuff. But um, with that being said, you guys, this be your boy Scott about Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And also be sure to click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. Also, if you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my TikTok will be down below in the description box. If you want me to follow you back on Instagram, all you got to do is hit me up in the DMs with the hashtag message Scotty Gang, and I would definitely follow you back with that being said you guys your boys out of here and i'm signing out and i will leave you guys with the promo of nova cosmetics as well as thirst trap boys presenting the queen's corner i'm out y'all bye